Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today I'm out on my hybrid electric bike, more on that soon. But today I'm working on Meshtastic. So take a look at this guys, a beautiful bit of Hertfordshire countryside right here um, with a pretty good takeoff. So this is kind of the location, it's not the exact location, but it's kind of the location of the node Hertford Hill, um, if you've come across that on Meshtastic. And here is the node itself. So I need to whip the battery out of here and change this. Um, it lasts about a week or so, so I'm going to just swap that over now. So these are like my test nodes guys, these are like my temporary ones for scouting out new locations. Um, so very very small, it runs on a 21600 battery and just super compact. It's got a Raspberry Pi Pico in here and I've got a little method of swapping the batteries out on these little cases um, which doesn't make it too much hassle. But ultimately I want to have more of a permanent solution for this location because it's turning out to be quite a pivotal node in this area I think. So this is what's inside the box, just the Raspberry Pi Pico, obviously 21700, these are 5 amp hour cells, so they last quite a while but this node is quite busy so it isn't lasting as long as I thought, as I say about five days six seven maybe a week if you're lucky um, but it still runs for quite a while so i'm just going to unplug this battery and put in the fully charged one so just sealing the box back up just some weatherproof tape we've got to pop all these sides down um, and then i've got self amalgamating tape on the antenna because that never comes off um, and that is it it's basically done so i can just put it back up and off it goes for another week Right guys, just found a nice little quiet spot to pitch up and um, have a chat about mesh testing and how things are going in the UK. Um, I love it at the moment because obviously the weather's really nice and um, it's just good getting out and about, especially on the bike and stuff with mesh testing nodes, doing range tests, putting new nodes up, doing a bit of that side of it. So yeah, it's been pretty enjoyable. Um, so on the topic of the network, so obviously we changed over to medium fast a few of us quite a lot of us changed over to medium fast to do a little test to see you know if it made any difference with um you know the traffic obviously medium fast goes a bit faster data rate um that sort of thing so you'd expect you know it to free congestion a bit um actually what we found was medium fast kind of if you didn't see the last video it kind of really hampered range and it you know a lot of people weren't seeing nodes in their node list and all that sort of stuff so we've kind of gone back to long fast now and it's it's actually been working really well since the latest firmware i think it's 2.3 one of the later ones of 2.3 the later versions of 2.3 firmware um maybe it's like one six or so i can't remember it moves so quick um so i, I think we're on 2.4 now and there's been a couple of iterations of that but basically the later end of 2.3 and going into 2.4 are oh, they seem to be a lot better for messaging um you know you're never going to solve this problem with you know the mesh kind of not functioning you know as well as it could in some scenarios but what i've found is since putting the omnidirectional antenna that i've got up um and having that obviously you know, I've always could not run any length of coax. Um, I've always had the node right at the top with the antenna. But I've kind of got it another about another metre higher now in the tree outside. And it's it's definitely pulling in some signals. Definitely pulling in a lot more signals than it, than it did. Um, and it's meant that I've got a stronger link to... There's a couple of stations that I've got a really strong link to. Now, this is what I want to come on to kind of talking about. Because people kind of think, oh... You know, get a node, stick it in your window and turn it on and, and all's going to be good. But the problem is with that is you are really limiting your experience by doing that. Yes, sometimes it can work. Like, for example, if you've got another node down the road um, and they've got a really strong link, they've got a big antenna up or something like that, then you could use that station and not necessarily have to put a big antenna up yourself. That's that's pretty good but the chances of that happening unless you're in an area like we are where there are lots of stations mainly because obviously i did lots of videos and you know this area has become you know quite popular for it and the same with lewis in the manchester region you know ringway manchester has done for done videos and that has kind of made um that area quite quite um it's been a massive uptake in that area as well um but yeah what i want to just sort of say is it's really important to look at your node list and work out what your strongest signal is. Between minus 120 and upwards, minus 100, you know, you, you will unlikely see those high levels unless you've got outdoor antennas or a node really close to you. But, 
yeah, basically, if you've got a really strong link, um, and then that station has got a strong link, then you're, you're going to be quids in. It's going to work really well. Where the problem happens is when you kind of pick up lots of distant nodes, and they're all very sporadic, because of the way LoRa kind of propagates and tr travels in very, 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 very high noise areas, um, or high interference levels, um, your, those beacons will come through. So you, you could see loads of stuff in your in your node list, but what you want to be looking for is the strong signals and try and focus on those strong signals. So say for example, I'm trying to think of like an example, but maybe if I just get my node list up and just sort of try and show you what I mean. Stupidly, I didn't bring my node with me, which is just I don't know, a major fail. I thought I'd put it in my pocket, but anyway, um, that might help me because I'll be able to show you what I can see from home, um, which was about an hour ago. So got this helicopter going over above me um, so if we look here so Hartford Omni that is my station that's my main station um, the other thing I will say here is I've gone back to just using one node um, rather than having a node in the house on client mute and then just relaying through that I'm trying to eliminate hops as many hops as possible by, by actually logging into my most powerful node um, first like just literally not having any hops so don't have your node inside the house relaying to the one outside any extra hop is gonna you know that's not gonna help messaging um, I'll tell you now that that is one of the things that won't help it at all so just having just if you can you know even like this Hartford Omnis this is connected by Wi-Fi to my my home network so I can just sit inside and just use this um, use this this Hartford Omni station so that's a good thing to bear in mind just you know log into the node that's got the best aerial directly if you can um, so next up look here see I always talk about this Axle F station which is always really good um, now you can see here he's he or she or whoever is minus 116 that's very strong to me and it's 17 kilometers away um, the signal to noise is reasonably low as well um, so that's a really good station to sort of link through um, now you can't choose who you link through obviously but if you are if you do have a strong signal um, between you and say this station here then what's going to happen is you're going to the, the packets are going to get through to this station pretty much 90% of the time um, and so anyone that can also see this station at very similar levels here will also get messages coming through pretty reliably okay so that's that um, I can use this station here to talk to stations 17 kilometers in you know other stations in the radius of this axle 868 they're going to be pretty strong and it's proven I can message these guys um, in this area which happens to be St Albans pretty reliably um, now going down the list see look we've got here like bounds green hops hops away too so he's he's obviously coming from you know coming through a couple of links that's not going to be very reliable at all i can say that because unless each of these hops are really really reliable um then you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be able to do much with this station here now that's not always going to be true but what you want to be looking at is when did you last see that station if that last station is saying like you know one hour two hours three hours something like that then and those hops away is, are saying like two three four five then that is a that's going to be a sporadic station you're unlikely to be able to message them um, directly or do do anything really um, same with the, all these ones hops away three um, obviously that's my my one of my stations at home that's a minus 45 so it's very very close another one Chesant mobile hops away four you know they may catch stray messages when you send something out on long fast or whatever they may get the message they may not it's going to be pretty um pretty kind of unreliable but other ones like this one here um you know minus 115 i could probably probably message him As i keep saying he it could be could be anyone <laughs> but um they are most likely to get a message because their rssi the rssi is pretty low there um, or pretty strong the signal is pretty strong um you know, another interesting thing here is one of these, this station here, Hoddesdon, this is my parents' house. There's a massive great hill between my parents and me. And, but now, because I've actually kind of got a, quite a strong link between me and there's a station in Royden, um, I get one hop between them and that is actually working pretty well at the moment, just on one, one hop. So one hop seems to work kind of okay, but you know, don't, any more than that you might might be might be unlucky 
So other than that, we've got, got loads of stations here. See, there's Royden there. Um, I actually get quite a good, reliable connection with him. Um, and I can message him pretty reliably there at minus 122. That works quite well. Um, and the rest of them obviously go down. Now, we have been seeing a bit of a lift on at the UK, in the UK. So lift is like tropospheric ducting. We do a lot about this stuff in, in ham radio, but if you're not familiar with it, you can Google and find out how this works. But it's very, very cool because it means that you can pick up stations a lot further away than you normally would. Funnily enough, they've this the ones that I the long distance ones I've actually kind of lost now. I don't know why, um, but I had some round. Um, I had some round. I actually had some in the Netherlands. Um, maybe I'll find that screenshot for you earlier, so I can actually kind of show you that. So yeah, guys, it's all experimentation. That's what I love about this this kind of hobby. It's not really a kind of off the shelf, you know, off grid messaging system. I don't think it's ever good. it's never going to be that unless someone you know very cleverly works out um, you know where to put nodes in an area and, and strategically um, do it. This is how cell cell networks are planned. Um, I've done quite a lot of work in my area to work out where where hills are, um, putting nodes up there. You see, obviously the one I've just stuck up, um, just replaced the battery on, and it makes a heck of a lot of difference. It really does. You know, if you can get a strong link to a good area that also can then get strong links on. That's what it's about, it's about the links. Don't expect you're just gonna put something in the window and it's gonna pick up, you know, hundreds of nodes. You might see hundreds of nodes in the node list because of propagation, because of like, you know, um, there are ways that you might just see lots of stations coming in. And that's what I'm saying about Meshtastic, like it's it's actually, it's more of a lower thing, but it's, it's actually brilliant the way it, it, it kind of brings you in beacons so your your node list is just massive you can see loads of nodes on the list and loads of um, uh, GPS positions and things like that so it gives you a really good indication the thing is with me that's that alone is enough to, to kind of get me excited about it and it's why I got excited in the beginning because just seeing beacons even though you can't maybe can't do messaging with those stations just seeing those beacons that is incredibly cool I can't impress on on people how crazy that it is to be getting a beacon from from the Netherlands no, no internet needed you know these are not M, this is not MQTT or anything like that this is coming over the airwaves directly between you and that other station now that's that to me is is just really super cool. So focusing on beacon lists, um, you know, working that out, that side of it. Um, having oh, someone standing over there, don't know what they're doing, looking at me like, why am I shouting in the middle of the woods? <laughs> but yeah, things like that are just are just are, are really good. On from that, you've got to do some work with messaging. Um, it, it's understandable because it is a hard thing to it's a hard thing to do. Like, as I say, unless you roll out big infrastructure and, and stuff like that and kind of put nodes in different proper strategic places and have routing, proper routing, which Mestastic kind of doesn't. It's a bit of a, a free-for-all, like flood routing, but it does it does actually work, yeah, and it's starting to work better. And with that, I think I'll leave it on this one because I've waffled on enough. Um, just wanted to give a little catch-up and update, especially you mentioned like, this, this propagation stuff that's been happening recently. Um, it's been crazy. We've seen like 300 kilometer ranges and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, guys, have fun with it. Join us on our Discords. We've got two Discords kind of you know, running at the moment simultaneously and lots of the same community are dotting, dotting backwards and forwards. So empowered247.com um, and I'll leave the link to that Discord. Um, and Mark and the boys are doing like loads of cool stuff um with meshtastic and supplying the rack gear and all that kind of kind of thing and then we've got my discord obviously and there's a meshtastic section in there and we're all just like kind of bashing ideas about and um just just basically just having fun with it so yeah guys hope you enjoyed this one let me know in the comments what you think and your experience with meshtastic whether it's bad or good whatever let me know what videos you want to see as well and i'll catch you next time <laughs>